Hey guys, it's here with Vegas Print Supplies. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be unboxing the brand new Roland BY20. This is the newest desktop DTF printer that Roland has just released. I'm going to be unboxing it and walking you guys through the whole installation process all the way to making our own product. So let's get started. The Roland BY20 is the newer updated model of the BN20D. It is twice as fast as the BN20D, now printing up to 36 square feet an hour. This is an amazing machine for getting into DTF printing. It has a small footprint which makes it nice, but is still able to hook up to an inline shaker dryer unit for a higher production. VersaWorks is included with the purchase of any Roland printer, but now with the new BY and BN2 series, Flexi Designer is also included to make workflow even more seamless. Now that I have the machine unboxed and it's behind me, we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the installation process. There's a QR code on the side of the machine that you can scan to take you to the installation guide with all the software you need to download. If you've not downloaded VersaWorks and Roland DG Connect Hub yet, that is the first thing you will need to do. The new interface is now the Roland DG Connect Hub. Now following the installation guide, the first thing we're going to do is remove the retainer. The next thing we're going to want to do is connect our cables, plug in the machine, and power it on. The newer models now take Ethernet. If you don't have cable right where you are or you don't want to have to run a bunch of wires, you can use an adapter like I'm showing right here, as long as it has the proper port that will be compatible with the Ethernet cable. From here, you can plug it into your computer and set it up as a USB, just like the older models. The last thing we're going to want to physically do on the machine before we start with our ink fill up process is to put our media roller bar onto the machine. Now we're going to do the ink up process. Before inserting the ink cartridges, we need to shake each one about 50 times for about 20 seconds or so. The reason we do this is so if the ink is settled, we can shake it and it can all mix back up. Now we're going to load the media. Now we're going to do the nozzle dropout test to make sure that all of our nozzles are there after the fill up. Now that we've ensured all of our nozzles are there, we can do our multi-sensor adjustment just to make sure that everything is properly aligned. Now that everything's adjusted, we're going to put the cutting tool in and adjust it properly. The key tip here for putting the tip of the blade into the tool holder is to make sure that the blade is peeking out just enough to cut through the material that you are printing on. Now that the installation is all complete, I'm gonna head over to VersaWorks to connect my printer and start printing. To connect my printer, I'm going to go to Printer, Printer Settings, and add a new printer. Now since I connected my printer to my computer via a USB connected to a LAN, I'm going to search for printers, so now you can see that my BY popped up and I can select it. If I verify this, it's going to double check that everything's accurate, then I can select OK. Now it's going to prompt me to download the printer driver. Now we can see on the left that my BY is ready to print. I'm going to now bring in my file into QA. Now I'm going to navigate and find my file and bring it into QA. Now that I have my file and it's already in the queue, I can double click on it to open it up. Here is where I can do all of my job settings. So I can get my media width first so I ensure that I'm printing on the correct width, and then I can adjust the size if I want to. I can also change the copies. So I can do two of these and I can change the sizing. I can also change the orientation. I always like to center on the media just in case to leave enough room on both sides. Also, always make sure that everything is mirrored. Quality I'm going to leave the same, and it's giving me an estimate that it'll take three minutes to print both of these at standard quality. With the BY, they added the option where you now can print CMYK and white at the same exact time. The last thing I wanna check is my printer controls because I might wanna cut the sheet after output, so if I want to, I can select that. If not, I'm going to unselect it. Once my file's all complete and ready to print, I can click OK, and then I can hit print. Once I'm ready and I hit print, 
It's going to send it to rip first, and then once it's done ripping, it'll immediately print. I could also just hit rip if I wanted it to just wait in the queue for me when I'm ready to print it again. Now that we have our print all ready, we have to put powder on it. I like to use the roll-in powder as I found it's the finest powder that you can use and it always turns out the best. Now that I have my prints all powdered, they're ready to be cured underneath a manual swing away heat press. Since I'm not using an inline shaker dryer, I'm going to be using my manual swing away heat press since it's the most efficient way to get my prints cured. You will know your prints are cured once you look at them and feel them and they look and feel like an orange peel. I'm going to press my shirt for five seconds to ensure that all of the moisture is out of the shirt so that the transfer can adhere as best as possible. This is not necessary, but it is best practice. Once I'm done pressing the shirt for five seconds, I can go ahead and line up my transfer exactly where I want it. Once I'm ready, I'm gonna press that for 15 to 20 seconds. Again, it's going to depend on the powder you're using and the film you're using, but for the Roland powder and the Roland film, it is recommended around 15 to 30 seconds. You will just have to find the sweet spot. After I'm done pressing the transfer onto the t-shirt, since the roll-in film is a cold peel, I'm going to have to wait for the shirt to cool down before I can peel it off. Now that the shirt's cooled down, I can peel off the transfer, and just like that, it comes off like butter. This is how the final product turned out. I think it turned out great. I hope you guys learned something, whether it helped you with your own BY20, or made you realize maybe you need a BY20. As always, leave a thumbs up if you learned something from this video, subscribe for more of our content, and make sure to leave a comment down below of some more content you would like to see in the future. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.